So today I wanted to continue um, exploring interaction between Adobe products, specifically Illustrator and Photoshop. And this is the final result in lesson 14. It's mostly a Photoshop project where they actually executed it or finalized it in Illustrator. Um, but I want to also demonstrate for you how to integrate Illustrator with Photoshop and some of the things that you need to look out for. Okay. Um, so this may not be a very long lecture today. And um, I guess the other thing that I should uh, make note of is that Friday, I mean, tomorrow will be our last webinar, um, but Friday is technically the last day of class. So if you can get everything in, um, some of you are on, on the mark and some of you um, are missing lessons and still have the final project to turn in and stuff. And I won't grade until probably Sunday. So if um, give you a little bit of extra time. Um, but then uh, tomorrow really is it. So if some of you already have your final project, we could probably do a, 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 a short um, critique of that. I'm curious to see what some of you have done. Okay, so back to um, Photoshop and Illustrator. If um, we deconstruct the project they've done for us, this is the final version. And you can see that they have a text layer, they have the pictures layer, and then they have the background layer. Okay. And I've, um, I've locked them all. But if we twirl down, let's go ahead and turn off the top two layers and just look at the background and twirl that down to see what they have. Um, so this is always a good way when some, if someone were to give you a file to, um, before you actually start working with it to deconstruct it, um, to understand how it was put together because there isn't any one way of doing any of these projects. So as you can see, we have a background image. Okay, so that's that. That's at the back of everything. And we have the next image here on top. Okay, and if I were to turn this one on, okay, that's another image that we have. So let me go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at this from the final version. I want to, because I've been tinkering with it, so I want to make sure that I'm looking at it exactly as we see it. So let's go ahead and turn these off again. And yeah, they had turned this, this is a clipping mask. And you can see if we pull this out a little bit, you can also see how they um, applied this. No, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a mistake. This is a color fill. And actually it's been turned off. So we have our lily pads and combined with the water. These are, you know, Photoshop files, not JPEGs, um, TIFF files, or any other file format, but Photoshop files that have been opened directly into Illustrator. So obviously this so far is more of a Photoshop project than an Illustrator project. Then we can come um, go ahead and turn on the next layer up here, which are these photographs. And again, they've imported two images, and then they've combined paths with those. So if I turn off the paths, okay, you can see that there is a clipping group. Okay, we have another clipping group that's cropping the photograph. Okay, and if I turn that entire group off, so they've taken a Photoshop image or images They've used rectangles to make clipping groups to crop part of the photographs and then place them in here. So again, so far this is a Photoshop project, but done in Illustrator. And then even the last thing that we have here, which is the text. 
None of this in the final project is editable text. These are all groups with clipping paths with um, images that are, for example, if I look at, let's look at this one right here. If I twirl down on this one, this is a clipping group. So they've taken text, they've outlined the type so it's no longer editable, but it's turned into, um, it's been entirely turned into a, a, a paths. And then they've used those paths as a clipping mask to um, contain the photograph within it. Okay. So this is entirely a Photoshop project. And the thing that, um, which is totally legit, but um, I don't know that I would do it here. The one advantage that Illustrator has over Photoshop, there's several, but one of them in particular, is that you have much more control over type in Illustrator than you do in Photoshop. Um, but what they have done with this, and I don't recommend that you do this with your final project, is that you outline fonts. Before you outline them, I would make a copy of them first in the event that you need to um, edit them for any reason. And the reason that I say that is that when you outline fonts, um, that number one, they're no longer editable. Um, but at the same time, the advantage of doing that is that when you hand your file over to someone else, um, they don't need to have that font or the font family in order to have access to the completed file. So that can be an advantage. Okay. Now, um, what we did the other day, remember I added these items to my library? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch right now and I'm going to go to Photoshop. And I opened one of those files um, from the final, that, from lesson 14 um, in here. And you'll notice that while I'm in Photoshop, that I still have access to some of the library items. So let's go ahead and let's take an Illustrator file and integrate it with Photoshop. And this, these lily pads are um, a Photoshop document. And if I just drag this out like so, you can see I have a guitar. I have the one that they provided for us the other day. Now, what I can do is let's look at layers inside here to see what's going on. If you look at um, layers in Photoshop, and I know it'll be hard for you guys to see this, but this is a, a vector smart object, which means that um, it still behaves and has all of the characteristics of a file that is done in Illustrator. It is still vector. It can be resized. Um, the resolution of this is really unimportant because it is vector and it's defined by mathematics. Now, the lily pads, on the other hand, are a little bit different. They're a different animal altogether. Um, it, select the, um, let me go back here. Uh, Professor, do you mind switching the interpreters to Bernice? Sure, okay. Um, hold on here. Um, Bernice. There you go. So um, if we were to look at, if we look at the files in the, the Photoshop files down here, um, if you wanna know what the resolution is, and I'm sort of getting into Photoshop right now, is that one way of doing that is just going to image, image size, and we can look here and we can see that the resolution of this is only 150 pixels per inch. Now for most, printing jobs, that would be inadequate. We would want something 300. Now we could change this to 300, but typically um, that is a no-no um, because what that will do is um, even if we resample it, um, because we're doubling the number, actually we're quadrupling the number of pixels in a square inch. 
Um, it has to interpolate. And oftentimes you'll get blurring, you'll get jaggies. Um, usually the blurring is what occurs. The images, the original Photoshop images aren't as crisp as you would like them to be. So no, you, tip, you have to know in advance when you're working in Photoshop, the size that you'll be printing. And when you do, then make sure if it will be printed, especially with offset lithography, but even if not, if you want a high quality print, it should be 300 pixels per inch. Not, I mean, 150 is fine for presentation purposes. It's um, 72 pixels per inch is perfect or really all you need for designing for the web. Okay. But originally my point was, this is a, one way of bringing this object in here. So that's one way of doing that. So what I can do is let's go ahead and let's select that layer. And I'm just gonna throw it away. Boom, so that's gone. Another way, um, and, and from my perspective, keeping your Illustrator files as vector are really, really important because that enables you to scale them indefinitely and to manipulate them without any cause for worrying about them blurring or being uh, kind of pixel, looking pixelized. Um, so another way that you might want to open the file in, in a Photoshop file would be to go to File, Open. Now I saved a copy of this on my desktop and I'm just going to open up an Illustrator file in Photoshop. And that's something that you can do. Um, hopefully I'm not crashing here. I'm going to get the little color wheel spinning. And we'll see what happens. Um, there we go. So I go to my desktop and where's my Illustrator file? Um, bum, 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 bum. I am looking at my desktop. Yep, okay. Um, yeah, I named it guitar. It's the same image. Okay, so I just placed that guitar on an Illustrator background and saved it as an Illustrator file. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. And when I do, this dialog box pops up, and this is what you need to be concerned about. That the page option shows that the, it was an AI file or Adobe Illustrator. But what it's going to do is it's going to convert this image to a bitmap. Now, um, in this particular instance, maybe I want it 300 pixels per inch. Do I want it to constrain proportions? Sure. Um, unless you don't mind distortions. And generally, I don't until afterwards. And I, I, if I want to distort it, then I will do that. I don't want it to be distorted by default. Um, then you can determine the bit depth, and I can click OK. And there it is. It's open in, in Photoshop now. And you can see the size of it. It's 300 pixels per inch. I can now take this image, and I can use the Move tool, and I can combine it with my other image here and drag it over. And notice how much bigger it is, because I saved it at 300 pixels per inch in the document uh, in the Photoshop document of the lily pads is only 150. So it enlarges it to expand um, for the 150. Um, if I hit Command T to transform it, I can. But the downside to this is that it's no longer vector. Now, if this were, if, if this illustration contained gradients and that sort of thing, um, I might be concerned, but you'll notice that when I zoom in, I see the pixels. I don't like that. I prefer, you know, if I'm using vector art to leave it vector art, that's my preference. So I rarely open an uh, Illustrator file directly into Photoshop because it will convert it um, to a bitmap. So that's a no-no. Instead, another way of doing that would be to go back to Illustrator. So I'm going to go back to Illustrator. And I have my guitar file here. This is the file that I say. So what I can do is that if I want to combine it 
with my Photoshop file is just select it and do a Command C for copy. And then go back to Photoshop. And now Command V for paste. And when I do, it pops up and it asks me, what do I want to do with that file? Do I want to make it a smart object? Do I want to convert it to pixels? Do I want to use just the path? Or I do want to convert it to a shape layer? Well, I'm going to leave it as a smart object. And click OK. And there you go. So as a vector smart object that's been imported, it remains. Um, Um, mathematically, um, really, you know, vector compatible, allowing me to do what I want with it. Now, when, even when I zoom in, though, the reason that you can see the pixels here is because it is only um, 150 pixels per inch. And it looks pretty crappy, to be quite honest. I don't know that I would want to use that in this way. Okay. But that's you know, one of the things that you need to consider when you're going back and forth between vector and, and, and raster. So <clears throat> I'm going to try something a little bit different and experiment with you here. Um, I'm going to remove that from here. And I want to open, I'm going to go ahead and open, let's close this guitar, um, lily pads. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm close this. And I'm going to open one of my files here. So let's go to file open. And I'm going to go to the desktop. And I'm going to open one of my bagels. That's the name of the dog, bagel. So again, if I look at um, my image of bagel here, and I wanted to integrate um, uh, uh, the guitar image with her, first thing that I want to do is I want to look under image and go to image size. And you can see that this is 240 pixels per inch. Um, now I've talked about high resolution being ideally at 300 pixels per inch. However, there are exceptions to that. And with most digital cameras now, um, even those that uh, cameras that, that have raw file formats, um, those, the resolution of those images is 240 pixels per inch. So they fall under slightly a different rule. And 240 is more than adequate. So let me go back to Illustrator again, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring it in just out of curiosity to see what it looks like. So let's go to Illustrator. Let's take my guitar object. I'm going to go ahead and Command C, copy. I'm going to go back to um, Photoshop. And I'm going to go to Paste, Command V. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try shape layer and see what we get. So if I do that, it may not come in. Yeah, you know, see, if I'm not careful about the layer that I use, and I want to bring that all the way to the top, this isn't exactly what I, you know, what I want here. I want to, let's bring this all the way to the very top. It just brought it in as, as a rectangle. I don't want that. That's not going to help me at all. So let's try again. I'm going to hit Command V to paste. Come on. Command V. There we go. Um, so I don't want a shape layer. Let's try pixels. So if you know that you're not going to enlarge, you know, I said I prefer leaving it vector, but if you know that you're not going to enlarge the, the, the illustration, that you're importing from Illustrator, um, but it will be left that actual size or smaller, then pixels would be okay. And so now when I bring it in now, see this could be an issue because it is kind of small. And you'll see that you know we have these little 
rough, ragged pixels that are available here that are, you know, not, I don't find all that, you know, pleasant. And if I enlarge it, so if I go ahead and I enlarge this image, then typically the pixels get even larger. So now if I come back in here, let's go ahead and finish it. And there, by finishing it, um, it doesn't look half bad because I've zoomed way in at over 500%. So that will work just fine for me. Okay, so that's bringing it in is pixels. So let's go ahead and move this over and let's go ahead and hit command V for paste again. And let's bring this in as a smart object instead. And we'll go ahead and click. Okay. Now let's enlarge it and about the same size as the other one that I brought in here. And compare. And they both look really very good. So it's up to you, you know. Um, I would normally leave it a smart object. I think that's the smarter way to go. Um, if you're going to integrate your illustrations in, done in Illustrator with Photoshop. But, um, you know, in this particular instance, just to bring it in as pixels would be equally as good because when you do print your piece, especially using offset lithography, um, there's no such thing as vector. Um, they don't do that. Everything has to be converted to pixels. Everything has to be converted to a halftone screen. So, um, generally speaking, they do prefer that you work with something that's at least 240, 300 pixels per inch. But um, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. Um, let me pause my recording. And um, again, that's integrating Photoshop with Illustrator and Illustrator with Photoshop. Um, you can go back and forth. Um, for those of you who don't have any experience with Photoshop, um, there are vector tools available in the toolbar over here. And you can see that there's a pen tool which is similar to the one that we've used in Illustrator. It's close to being the same, a little bit different. I don't think quite as good um, because it really isn't intended for this purpose, you know, working in Photoshop, but they are available. The type tool um, is vector because it can be scaled indefinitely. Um, here are the typical move and the direct selection tools. And here are some custom shapes that you can create in, in, um, in Photoshop. All of these are, are vector. Okay. So there are some um, vector or object-oriented um, attributes or components of Photoshop. Now, back in the day before um, Illustrator or um, Adobe became subscription-based, um, you would have to make a decision. Are you going to buy, you know, buy a package of Adobe software that might include um, InDesign, uh, Photoshop, <coughs> Illustrator, and Dreamweaver, and I don't know, maybe there are some other packages that would include After Effects and things like that. Or maybe you could only afford just one. If you could only afford Illustrator, then, um, you know, how do you combine Photoshop or raster components into your design. Likewise with Photoshop, if you could only afford it, but you wanted to create vector images or vector graphics into your, um, your project, then how would you do that only having that one application so that they had um, in, both of, in both of the applications components that allow you to integrate them kind of minimum. But now that Adobe has gone to subscription-based, and if you subscribe to one, you subscribe to everything. And so now it really, many of these features become kind of, um, they're, they're, they're duplicated. Um, the, uh, it's really non, they're non-essential, but they're not going to eliminate them. So 
um, it, it would be up to you. Now for the, the final project that they're doing here, um, let me go back to Illustrator again. And would you mind switching the interpreters, Professor, back to Brooke? Yeah. Thank you. So let's go back there. Um, there you go. So, you know, if I were doing this project, um, I probably wouldn't do it in Illustrator. However, if I were um, concerned about the type, I might do the type in Illustrator and then port it over, you know, just copy and paste it over to um, Photoshop. Um, but they haven't done anything really unique with the type. But if your type was more illustrative and we were using some of the tools to deform it that aren't available in Photoshop, then maybe, you know, then I would have to do that in Illustrator and then again, port it over to Photoshop. But as I said, this is really a Photoshop project done in Illustrator, but you needed Photoshop anyway, because a number of these il illustrations or, or images were done in Photoshop. Um, and this kind of goes back all the way back to one of the first days of class is that, um, you know, depending on what you want to do, is your, is your design principally two-dimensional, flat, stylized, graphic? And if it is, then, you know, work in Illustrator. If it's predominantly um, photographic in nature with lots of um, gradations and um, a lot of detail that you would see, in a, in a detailed illustration or, or photograph, then maybe Photoshop would be the principal application that you would want to work with. And um, if you need to use other components, you know, other of other uh, programs, then so be it. But um, we're making it pretty um, easy to do that. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out that I noticed the other day too is that remember that little three-dimensional artwork that I made in Illustrator. And I put that inside the, um, uh, the library. So if I drag that out here, okay, like so. And I look at the properties or the, the appearance panel. Let me put this up here, there we go. So I'm gonna close layers. And I'm going to look at um, the appearance window, window appearance. There we go. So when we look at this image now, notice that by putting it in the library, it was nice to have it, but it's a linked file because it's linked to the library. It's not embedded. And you notice that the only thing that I can edit in this now is the opacity. I can't go back in and um, and edit the three-dimensional three properties as I could before, the lighting, the perspective, and that sort of thing. So it does alter a lot of that. The other thing that I noticed too is that you'll notice that the guitar pick, that's available in Illustrator because we have the type. If I were to drag that out, uh, I'd probably put that in the layer down below. And let's put that above everything here. We'll create a brand new layer. And let's put the guitar pick at the very top. There it is, teeny tiny little guitar pick. There you go. The reason that that is there is that we have the font. This is an editable font. Okay, was. But if I go back to Photoshop and I look at my library, um, you can see that um, in for for graphics that that pick is not available. Um, what I would have to do to make it available would be to go back to Illustrator, select the pick, 
Um, let's go inside it, see if I can't edit it inside here. Yeah, because this is a library item. Uh, no good, no cigar. I can't really edit it, the, the text. So I'm in isolation mode, but that text is no longer editable. So those are kind of the pluses and minuses of adding to the library is that really does fix it. Even though it's dynamic, um, there is, I can't go back and, and make that many changes to it. You know, I have to go back and to the original item. Um, let me see if I can't find that item and change it. So I'm going to go to file, open, and I want to go back to lesson 13. Um, let's see here. Let's go to desktop. Let's go to um, lessons. And let's go ahead and open lesson 13. And I want to look at these sample images. Okay. So let's take this one again. Notice that the text is editable. And normally I like, you know, I like to keep things like that. So I can, if I don't like the font, I can change it. But I'll go ahead and I'll select type. And I'm going to say that I want to outline, read outlines. So this is no longer editable text. And that's okay for us for right now. So now what I can do is I can take this whole thing. Let's take the whole kit and caboodle here. Let me zoom out. Make sure that I have everything selected in here. And I'm going to go ahead and group it. There we go. Now I'm going to put it into the library. So now I have another one. Um, but now what I should be able to do when I go, because this is no longer editable text, if I go back to Photoshop, do I have it? No, it's not allowing me to take it over. So why it took the vector art from the guitar and not the guitar pick, I don't know. I'm not sure right now. Hmm. Okay, well, that's the way it goes. I thought for sure that was the reason. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And let's bring this new one out. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it was this. This is artwork for it. Let's bring this out. Let's double click. Now I'm in isolation mode. And let's look in here. Yeah, once it's a library item, you can't really edit it much. So those are the limits of the library. So it might be better to work with symbols and create your own symbol library, or um, you know, if you're working with styles, you know, that sort of thing. Um, create your own style library, and that sort of thing, so that you continue to have um, control over these images and be able to edit them indefinitely. So we're back here again. And I'm going to go back out of here. And we got this again. And our appearance panel. We got rid of that. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to cover today. It's um, again integrating or combining features from Illustrator into Photoshop and um, combining Photoshop features into Adobe Illustrator. Um, the one thing that I've I've found a bit frustrating is that with the newer lessons is that they will have fonts that I don't have on my computer. And because my computer, the Adobe, is licensed through the school, I should have access to all of their type. And I don't. So when I open the, the original, um, start file, um, I didn't have much to go on. You know, I have my images that I can work with. 
um, but the text, and when I turn that on, it wouldn't load the fonts that, that they had or that they wanted me to um, find in view. So I find that a bit frustrating with Adobe, um, that we should have access to them. I don't know if you guys have had issues with that, but I have. So um, as much as I love type, I don't use that many unique fonts. And when I do need them, I will grab them and use them at, on an as needed basis. But we should have access to hundreds, if not thousands of fonts that, we, that I, at least I don't have access to them. Okay. So again, um, that's it. Um, short, short lesson today. Is, is there anything that anyone wants to share with me or um, help you guys work on on your final project? If you have any questions, let me go ahead and pause the, um, this might be the, stopping the recording if that's if we're done for today but i'll go ahead and pause it and if not i will see everybody tomorrow so.